Good morning guys. Um, doing some groceries right now. The recipe idea for today came from one of my regular viewers, Ian Brennan. Uh, he asked me if I could do my own take on the carpenter steak. To be honest, I never heard of the carpenter steak. First time for me, so I had to Google it. And I found out that it's a pretty weird steak. All right, we're here at the restaurant specialty shop. Get some fresh ingredients. Good morning, Roel. Morning, Morgen. So, did you why, why did you uh, want me here at, what time is it? Nine o'clock? <laughs> I won't complain. So, what are we going to do here? Groceries. Got a tomahawk, tourne d'eau, bacon, and our secret ingredient. So what's the plan? Go to the barn, fire up the barbecue, and uh, we got a special guest coming. So that's gonna be exciting as well. He's gonna help us with this cook. Top plek man. Hi sir. Yeah. We speak English here. All right, great, great, great. <laughs> we need your help, bro. Yeah. We're making a steak. Yeah. And we need a sauce to go with it. Great. I think you're the man to help us with it. <laughs> How do you like our cute little doggy? Yeah, I love it. I love doggies. Hi. How are you? She loves my shoes. You yeah. see it? Yeah, she loves your shoes. Yeah. She loves you. You smell good. Uh, yeah. You smell like barbecue sauce. Uh, always. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Schroeder is the owner of Dolly Sauces. And his sauces are freaking awesome. That's why I asked him here to help us with this steak. Mainly his dolly sauce is super, super popular in Germany. Everybody loves it. And what better guy to ask to help us make a good steak sauce than Jeffrey. So we are making the carpet bag steak and this has been around for a long, long time. Actually, it was a fisherman and they upgraded their meat by putting in Hold on, Marcin, are you ready for this? They put in oysters in their steak. What? That's disgusting. No way, it's great. But how? Is it? <laughs> yeah. I love oysters. With Eating meat? In your steak? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. But how? Well, my honest opinion. No, of course, no, we want, <laughs> we want the fake opinion. Okay, yes, do oh. it. But you have to eat it. Let's not do it. <laughs> you, you barbecue people are weird. Jeff, you think it's a good idea? Uh, I'm not no. so sure yet because I haven't had it before, but that's the reason why I want to try it. I think we need to try every possible steak in the world. And if this has been a thing for years and years and years and people have loved it, so why not? Why not try it? So this is beef tenderloin. This is a normal steak. For This is a large steak. If you would go to a restaurant, you would pay at least 30 euros for a dish like this. We do have a big bag of bacon. We need one. Maybe two. Three? No, not three. Four? No, one. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> These are our French oysters. Look at that. Ho, 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 ho. They even come with a knife. Look at that. Let me tell you, people. If you got a fresh oyster, it doesn't smell. It's really, really, you smell the ocean. That's what you smell, but you don't get like a, a pugnant fish smell. So if you're not into oysters, man. That's so sad. The only hard part about this is opening it. So that's why they give it me a knife. And normally you get a protective glove so you don't stick your hand into it and, and start bleeding out all over the place. And uh, I'm not a trained uh, oyster opener, so this could be a thing. So but we'll work our way knife in there and then we'll start cu cutting the muscle that's on top here. Yeah, there we go. It's opened up and there is our oyster. Look at that. Now all we need to do is take the knife, work our way underneath, make sure it's completely detached from the shell and our oyster is done. Jeffrey, nothing better like oh, an wow. oyster for breakfast. Did you cut it? I didn't cut it yet. You won't see the master at work. Jeffrey loves oysters. Thanks. Gives you power, right? You a little bit of habanero hot sauce. Oh yeah, hot sauce or uh, some uh, teriyaki. Yeah, teriyaki sauce, squeeze of lemon. Ah. Well, Denise, there you go, your oyster. But it's okay, then take it for lunch. It's good for you, it's healthy. 
You don't have to like it. You just have to taste it. I know. It tastes no? Like I do. But you don't want it? No. Morsen? Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit too early. It's like the fruit of the sea. It makes me instantly think of holiday. Maybe you can try an oyster with this, uh, this sauce. I made a little oyster sauce with some teriyaki, uh, uh, ketchup, uh, lime. Uh, I put some honey in it, so you can taste it together. Mm, that's really good. It balances out the saltiness. Right. There's a lot of sweetness in there. Right. I didn't expect that much sweetness. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get on to the steak because otherwise we have no oysters left. And we got a steak left. That shouldn't be the case. So I'm taking my knife and I'm sticking it into my tuna dough and I'm basically carefully making an incision into a tuna dough. And then with my finger, I'm just gonna make sure that we got a pocket and that it's big enough. Look at that. So let's put the oyster in. We wanna keep that pocket as small as possible while getting in the oyster. Of course, that's a challenge, but the oyster is super tender. Looks uh, disgusting. It looks disgusting. No way, it's food porn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why does it look disgusting, Morrison? But if it was lobster, and would you, wouldn't you eat it then? I have to agree that it's an Aussie thing. Australian people love it. So I'm 25% Australian. No, you're not. If you don't like this, you're not 25% Australian. <laughs> now that we have our oyster in, we're going to wrap the bacon around it. And now we got our proper tuna dough. Look at it. Jolly dolly day. It's a jolly dolly day. I have buttons. You have buttons? Yeah, we'd have a dolly good day. Uh, have a dolly good day? Yeah, do you want some? Why don't I have the dolly come, button? Come, I get one. <laughs> so it's like Oprah. I've got a button for you and I've got a button for you. Here you go. Have a dolly good day. Have a dolly good day. Morrison, you want me to pin it on you? <laughs> does look good, right? Wow, it's wonderful. We're not gonna season it just yet with salt. We're just gonna leave it as it is. We're gonna let it slowly come up to temperature. Basically, we're gonna do the reverse sear technique. On the Napoleon, we're using our beautiful Prestige today. I'm setting it right in the corner, turning on the burners on the opposite side. Close the lid and let our steak come up to temperature. We're gonna cook it to around 52 degrees Celsius. Right and a core temperature, and then we're just gonna sear it off on the outside. When we know the flavor, I want you to make a beautiful steak sauce to go with it. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna make another one. Great. Because there are all hungry people here. I just wanna get a little bit of butcher's twine around it, because look, our bacon is just, it's just peeling off. So we'll take a little bit of butcher's twine, wrap it around it, tie it up, and done. Now all we need to do is wait for our core temperature to become 52 degrees Celsius. Perfect. We just killed Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about done, Jeffrey. Wow, I'm curious. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Man. We got a nice bit of color on it. The bacon rendered out beautifully. Mm. Now all we need to do is sear it off. We're going to turn on our sizzle zone. Put some gas on, wait for five seconds. And ignition. Now we wait until it's fully hot and then we're going to sear it off. I wanna make sure that our grill grate is a little bit non-stick. So I'm putting some olive oil on a paper towel. I'm going to put it on our grill grate. This will help to make the grill grate non-stick. So when we put our steak on it, hopefully it won't stick to it. Time to put our steak on the sizzle zone. Wow, it smells great. Smells good, right? Oh yeah. So we're going to make sure that we get a nice crust on our beef, but we also want to crispen up our bacon just a little bit more. And it's done. Look at a beautiful crust that we got on that bacon. Now that is what the sizzle zone does for you. We'll put it on the board. Wow. Looking good, right? Ah, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. Now we have to practice our worst side, waiting. Looking at it is also great. You should take a picture. Just smell it. What are you eating today? Big tomahawk is more like a ribeye tomahawk, manly with a lot of meat. Yeah. This is more like delicate. Then the lady should eat it. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So you're gonna eat it. 
Yes. Wow. We got a little diamond inside. Look at that. There's a booger. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Go home. Denise, finish up for him. Bye, Morrison. So, Jeffy. Yeah. I'm really wondering if we should put any salt on it. Because we got salty oyster, we got salty bacon. Bacon, yeah. What would adding salt do to it? So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. put it on the board, and then if you want to, you can dip it. You can dip steak. it, yeah. I'm going to cut you up. <laughs> oh, oh, you got yeah. the right one. Wow. You got the one. Mm. It looks stunning, man. Cheers, wow. brother. Cheers. There we go. Mm. Definitely serve and turf. Mm. I don't think it needs any salt. No. Real fun. First you get the oyster, mm. and then the beef, and then the bacon. I was a little bit hesitant before. I was really worried that the oyster might overpower the steak. Yeah. And in the first bite, I just got a bite of oyster, but then the beef kicked in and the bacon kicked in, and this is such a cool steak dish. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. Dish. Mm. Here's a try. It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. But you don't like oyster. You're going to eat more? Mm -hmm. What? What? Denise likes it. It must be really good, Marcel. <laughs> it's really good. It's like a cow from the sea. Yes, it's like a sea cow. It's like a sea cow. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's a sea cow. If a sea cow would be <laughs> yeah. on this plate, it would taste like this. So we're going to do one more like this. Jeffrey yeah. is going to make us a good sauce. And we're going to do one manly version. So while Jeffrey is making the sauce, I'm going to be preparing a manly steak as well. We got a beautiful tomahawk right here. Carpet back steak. So Jeffrey, the floor is all yours. Love to see what you can do. First of all, we're going to chop some tomatoes. Really? This big? <laughs> yes. We don't have any smaller. Oh man. Okay. Put it in this pan. We chopped an onion. We put some tomato paste in it. It's very concentrated. Now we're adding some ketchup manis, a little bit of salt. We slice a lemon and squeeze it over it. We're adding some honey for the sweetness in the sauce. And then we can put it on the fire. We're slowly going to stir the mass together and let it slowly cook. And we take it to the blender. That is a good looking sauce. Smells really nice. You can you can use it to glaze your meat with it. Uh, you can put it over your meat. It's yeah. Wish I could taste it. We gotta wait for it to cool down, Morrison. I got finished my steaks, by the way. I filled up our lady's steak with oyster and wrapped it in bacon. And for our man's steak, our proper tomahawk, I just filled it up with oysters and it's ready to go on the grill. We'll set them over indirect heat. There we go. The other one as well, and we'll let them come up to a temperature of 52 degrees Celsius. We're just fleeing for the killer bees. I heard they eat people. They also eat steaks. Our filet mignon has already reached its core temperature of 52 degrees Celsius. I'm turning on the sizzle zone. Time to put our filet mignon on our searing station. It's the same steak that we did before, cooked exactly the same way, except for now, we got a gorgeous sauce from Jeffrey to go with it. The carpet bag steak. Seriously, try it. Tell him, Jeffrey. Oh yeah, you got definitely got to try it. Oh yeah. What are you doing? I don't know, Denise told me to hold this thing. From pit master to a uh, screen holding person. Maybe we can put some of it on the plate. Yeah, sure. Seriously. We're standing here like, what, 30 seconds? Look, yeah. one, two, three, four. We're moving again, Morrison. Seriously, they're going with us. Oh man. Run, Jeffrey, run. <laughs> there you go. The yeah, sauce. Wow. Tell me about the sauce. I made the sauce uh, uh, with tomatoes, with honey, uh, uh, some ketchup, uh, manis. So the sauce has some, uh, has some uh, sweetnesses uh, in it. And um, I hope it will combine very good with the, uh, the meat and the, and the fish. What are you doing? Some fresh red onion. Nice. And some sesame seeds. Nice. So. Ooh. <laughs> Man, this is gonna be a treat. There we go. Mm. This is definitely good sauce. Okay. I love it. Salt, sweet. Oh yeah. Boom. It wow. really blends 
the beef well with the um, with the oysters. That's fantastic. I love that. Wonderful. So if you, if you if we would put a dolly sauce in there, do yeah. you have one sauce that that comes to mind that would go really well with this? Well, you made several things with mayonnaise. So I would recommend the dolly sauce original. Yeah. And then maybe sear the meat with the dolly sauce original, with garlic, with chili. We could do that with, uh, with the steak, with the man steak that we got. So the idea that I have is just, we're going to brush on that sauce. Of course, we need to give it a little try. And then we brush it onto the steak. And then when we brush the, the sauce onto the steak, we're just going to put it on the sizzle saw. Ooh. I'm just going to steal a little bit of that. Mm. Oh my God. Brush it on. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at it going. Oh, it's freaking awesome. <laughs> I think the steak looks about right. Oh yeah. Man. Wow. Is that a crust or? That's beautiful. Let's get wow. it out of the wasp zone. Oh man, the juiciness. The, the it looks so is... good. We have to wait again. This is the hardest part of barbecuing. But it's, waiting. Yeah, but it's so much fun when you put on a sauce, a mayonnaise based sauce, and when you start grilling it, it becomes something beautiful. It becomes yeah. something extra. Are you ready, Jeffrey? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. Always a good sign. When the knife goes through like that. Oh yeah. Buttery soft. Oh, there come the oysters. <laughs> Oyster ribeye with dolly seared sauce. I would recommend uh, taking a slice. Oh yeah. Mm. You lightly taste the garlic. I'm missing a little bit of the bacon flavor, a mm -hmm. little bit of the saltiness, so we're mm -hmm. gonna take some of your curry rub. It's gonna pop the flavors. One more try. Oh yeah, and dig in. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Mm. I don't know what just happened to the steak. Mm. This is crazy. This is mental. What's in there? <laughs> secret. <laughs> tell, tell me the secrets. Mm. All of them. I need to know. Mm. It's got a little bit more pool than the filet mignon, but yep. it's really good. Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as you guys could see, we had an amazing amount of fun and the steak that turned out fantastic. I never expected the carpet bag steak to do so well. I actually thought it's probably gonna be horrible, but Ian Brandon put me onto it and he asked me to do my version of it. Well, here it is. Hope you enjoyed it, brother. I wanna thank everybody, especially all of our YouTube members and our patrons, you guys freaking rock. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, guys, what's up? It's my click and keep on grilling! Woohoo!